Hi. Hello, Her. How are Mira. you? Mira, tú tan fancy over there. What'd you say? I said, tú tan fancy over there. With uh, your blazer and todo. I'm not with the I'm not the one with the power earrings right now. So I just... said I said you know what if I want to be talking to Rebecca I gotta throw on the accessories because <laughs> <laughs> listen accessories will zhuzh up any basic yeah. outfit. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you gotta be basic in the core outfit and then boom with accessories. <laughs> yes, I am an accessories girl for sure. But welcome everybody. You are tuned in to another episode of La Jefa Hour. Rebecca yep. and I decided to start this series a couple of weeks ago in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month as a way for us to connect with our community, to educate ourselves and each other, our community, um, and really just celebrate our cultura, who we are, why we are, and lend some what we hope to be really helpful strategies around how you are showing up as a jefa in your That's life. Right and in your business and all the things. So Rebecca, would you like to introduce yourself to the people? Sure, so I'm Rebecca Nieves Huffman, 20 year plus nonprofit executive, first generation to graduate college, first gen to do a lot of things, blazing those trails for my family and my community. And, um, and I also do social media content here and share a little bit about my life. And one of the things I love about this series, and today's going to be an example of that, is that we're going to go personal, right? Yes. Since a lot of times people have a lot of questions about business partnership and life partners and spouses and relationships, and that's really important. So we're going to get personal today. So if you guys want to share this live to all of the jefas in your circle, go ahead and do that and let them know to join in. So that's a little bit about me. I live in Chicago. I have two kids, 15 and 13 year olds. They're, they're in it. Teenage years, gotta <laughs> love it. Um, and I've been happily married uh, for 19 years. So um, to, to my husband, Craig. So, so yeah, that's a little bit about myself. Tell we love you, that over uh, here. Victoria, Jen, give them a little uh, insight onto who you are. Yes. So first of all, uh, can we get some applause? Okay. Well, how many? 19 years? Yeah, we've been married for 19 years. Yep. Oh my goodness. I just love, love so, so much. And this is why this conversation is going to be so juicy, right? Because we're talking about today finding the right partner in life and in business. And so we're going to get some really interesting perspectives here. So my name is Victoria Jen Rodriguez. Pleasure to be here with you guys for another week of La Jefa Hour. And I'm a top mindset and business coach. And what essentially that means is two main things I focus on. So I consult organizations on how to attract, develop, retain their talent, their most important asset, which is their human capital. That's right. So I will partner with them building out leadership development programming, coaching programming, onboarding programs, all the things in hopes of really humanizing the corporate experience uh, for talent that works within these organizations. In addition to that, you know, I was in corporate for 15 years and five years ago, I decided to bet on myself become a full-time entrepreneur. So now inside the Dare to Leap Academy, I actually teach women to do exactly the thing that I did, right? Which is make the transition from corporate, their nine to five into entrepreneurship without losing their financial security, which I think is really important. Um, so I coach them on how to actually build a solid business plan and plan for their exit so that they never have to go back and truly live life on their terms, which was the inspiration behind this series, right? Rebecca and I wanted this to be a series that was dedicated to Latinas who are obsessed with living life on their terms. And although we're speaking from the Latina lens, we welcome our hermanos into the conversation, especially right. today. So go grab your boo, make sure to share this replay with your boo, um, because we're gonna be talking about some really important topics around relationships, and I think both genders, right, can really benefit For from sure. what we're going to talk about today. So you ready to get this party started? Oh, girl, yes, I am. And such an important subject. And um, and it's interesting because there's so, like, when we got together to talk about what we were going to share, we were like, oh, my God, there's so many similarities on the tips that we're going to share of how you find the right business partner and how you go about finding the right life partner. And 
regard it's it's interesting because my husband's an entrepreneur so i am going to share some insights based on me being his partner in life and having a front row seat to uh the successes and the 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 fails that he's had in his business and that i've had in my um endeavors as well and so um so if i i really want to also stress the importance of um just no whether it's yourself or your business know yourself <laughs> that's like having that that like before we hop into the eight pointers we're going to share eight pointers um it, the fundamental on this is know yourself because when you know yourself you know your worth you know what your values are which are going to come up in the pointers that we're going to share and so yeah so just wanted to preface everything by saying know yourself and be passionate about yourself the way you would be passionate about your baby which is the business that you're trying to launch absolutely and i love that point because so many of us will skip over that part because it can be a little icky or uncomfortable or sometimes alarming when we realize certain things about ourselves but it's so important to be self-aware and understand who you are why you are your value system because that will make it that much easier for you to assess the people in your life, in your circle, and most importantly, you know, play two of the most pivotal roles, which I believe your life partner, right? Yeah, Somebody that you're yeah. going to continue to build and share the most intimate things about yourself, but yeah. also who you choose to go into business with. And to your point earlier, Rebecca, when we were doing kind of like the research for this conversation, it was like, wow, like so many similarities in what you look for in a life partner, same thing with a business partner. And it makes sense because who you're going into business with, you're essentially entering a personal relationship. Even though it is business, there needs to be certain things in place in order for that relationship to make sense. Uh, so let's go into our first tip, yeah? That's right. So the so, first one is, go, go you go. It. Okay, cool. So. First tip, and this is like, it seems so Captain Obvious, but make sure that your business partner, your life partner is someone that you genuinely like and you get along with <laughs> and that you trust. Um, right. And we do know that trust is earned over time. That's why we date people before we get married or we sh you know, live together, whatever that partnership looks like for you and your personal relationship. And so um, it's important that when you're entering into a business relationship in terms of a partner that you genuinely like that person because you will be married to them essentially for the next X number of years. And when we think about how much time a nine to five is a nine to five. It's 40 hours a week when you are a W-2 employee, right? But when you launch a business, it is not nine to five. It is a lot more. It is 24-7. So <laughs> it, it's all you think about. It's all you, yes. you, you, it's like you eat, you literally eat what you kill in business. And so um, it d just develops a certain kind of level of urgency that's different when you are working a nine to five and you know that on the first and the 15th, that money's going to be wired into your bank account. Mm -hmm. So it's just really important to, um, have some level of base trust with the person that you're going to go into business with. Um, I get questions. Do you get questions about this Victoria Jennifer? Like, should I go into business with my relatives? Yes. I get that but question a lot. What's your answer on that? I'm just curious. So relatives and friends, right? And, you know, in my experience, I've been in the game for five years and I've had a lot of opportunities to collaborate with yeah. friends, uh, with family. And what I found is, and this is why it's super important for you to take the time to assess people and ask difficult questions because at the start, you can have all the best intentions, right? You want this to win. You want to make money. You want this to be a valuable, you know, partnership. You want all the things. But once the work begins, to me, that is the true test. That's right. <laughs> That's when you see the true colors come out. And when you see how people operate under pressure. And when you see how they manage conflict. And with family and friends, I find that because there's it starts already with a personal relationship sometimes it's difficult to separate the two it's yeah. separate it's difficult to separate the business from the personal side and there you know lines get blurred 
and people get really, you know, salty about things that are happening and they start feeling away and then the bonjinche starts in the family, it's in the group chat and it's like, wait, it's, Nana, okay? it, it, you know, <laughs> yes, that's right, the bonjinche starts. And you know, sometimes there's a difference between starting a business with your relatives out of need, like you have no other choice. And God knows we've seen that in our communities. Yes. Starting a restaurant business, I can't tell you how many relatives I have that they go into business with each other, you know, and that's fine. Sometimes there's success in that, but I've seen examples in my own family where going into business with a relative hasn't worked. If you know somebody in your family is not good with finances, you shouldn't make them your chief finance officer in your business, you know, as an example. You know, yeah. if people can't manage their own personal finances, how are they gonna manage business finances and when you partner with them? So that's just an example, but take the time as Victoria Jen said, to really get to know that person as best as you can when you're going into a business relationship because they are going to be your partner in and your your it's in marriage it really truly is and so um so let's differentiate it because some people might be watching saying well I don't have a choice I have to go into business with my relatives for xyz reason um but if you have the choice uh remember this one quote my husband always says and I never got it until I saw it in action. Familiarity breeds contempt. And it's not lost on me that familiarity, what's the first words of that word? Familia. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sometimes with familia, we get too comfortable, we're too familiar, and um, we don't treat the re business relationships with the same level of respect that would be needed. So because I wanted to bring that up because this happens a lot in the Latino community where we go into business with our relatives. If you have the choice, really do a clear assessment on that and then follow the next set of pointers that we're going to share with you to see if it's a right fit. Yeah. And I want to add on to that. It's so funny that you mentioned that your husband has that quote because that's where I wanted to go next. There's a level of expectation that's placed on these relationships that wouldn't be the case if they weren't your family or friends because there's an expectation like oh you shouldn't talk to me that way or you shouldn't treat me that way or you should give me some grace because you know what i'm going through or whatever it right? is yes. it just gets really difficult to to separate the two and and i would say that if you are able to go into business with family or friends and actually make it work where you guys understand the communication style, you guys understand what really is the vision and the mission and are aligned on that. I mean, it's beautiful to make money with people that you love I mean, <laughs> and build I know, legacy, right? you know, it's like a dream, but we all know not all of us are the Kardashians for a variety <laughs> of reasons. I don't know about you, but I, I just caught up to the Hulu series that they went on. I, I didn't realize they went off to Hulu and started their own show. And when I'm looking at it, it, especially in preparation for this conversation, I'm like, that's an anomaly. But there's other sets of values that are probably driving the success there, too, which we'll get to the next point, which is number two. Find someone who shares your values, people. Um, I grew up in the church, and I remember a saying that they always say from the Bible, um, to be equally yoked. But let's take that a step further. What does that mean to be equally yoked, right? In the church context. Oh, we think, oh, okay, that means that they have to be a, a, a Christian or a faith believer, like the same religion. When I talk about equally yoked to my mentees and the, the women that I'm talking to that are single, it's like, you got to be aligned on your values. Um, you know, it even extends, like, I don't, you have to think about this for yourself personally, but I don't think I could be married to someone who doesn't feel a sense of social justice and understand their identity as a person of color that may even political views. Like I, I have to be, now maybe some people have more tolerance. You come from Colorado, which is like a purple state where they're, you know, they're all getting along over there. I'm making a huge assumption, but that's the rep, <laughs> that's the rep yes, they got yes, in yes, Colorado. Yes. That's the rep that they saying. have. And so I, I, the whole values, sharing your values is important because I cannot tell you whether it's in marriage, when you're raising kids, what kind of values you're going to instill in them, what are values you're going to observe, or when it comes to your business partner, I can tell you from personal experience, the whole Republican Democrat thing, um, I've seen that go very, very badly, you know, in terms of, you know, not just in business success, 
I've also seen people be successful in business, but as soon as they have the opportunity to sell their assets and part ways, it's like, Vete para allá, tú eres una plaga, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't want to live your life with the anticipation of you cannot wait to sell your business to be rid of your business partner. You want it to be a graceful exit. So having values alignment is really, really important. Absolutely. And let's share, how do you actually go about identifying your values? Because mm -hmm. we throw that around a lot. And I don't think people really know, like, what are my values? <laughs> what do I really care about? So a good exercise to kind of identify those values. And this is you actually taking the time and putting the effort to figure out, again, what's important to you is, is you know, take 15 minutes and write down on a piece of paper the things that are important to you. And if you're struggling with like, I, but I, don't, I don't know what's important to me, I would say think about people that you admire, people that, um, you know, live their lives a certain way. And you're like, you know what? I like that. That's something yeah. that I I to our, I identify with. Like use that uh, for best practices to pull in to figure out if it makes sense to you and if it speaks to your heart and soul. And to your point earlier, Rebecca, about, you know, one of your values is very much aligned to social justice, right? Yeah. So figuring out what are the things that you're really passionate about and, and make you move emotionally and, and trigger you in, in, in a good and bad way because the bad way will indicate the things that you do not value, right? Exactly. That you do not value. Um, but the things that indicate that trigger you in a positive way that get you energized, you're like, oh, hold on, let me explore this a little more and see what more um, I can tap in to identify what are the things that really align with my mind, body and soul, <laughs> really, because that's what makes up your value system. And if it's okay, Rebecca, I think we should give a couple of examples of what we value to hopefully inspire people to think about like, oh, wait, I think I value that too, right? Yeah. Um, so I'll start. And, and when I say this, I want to say as you evolve as a person, your values will as well, right? What you value 10 years ago might not make sense now, right? Before I value being able to go out, have a good time, socialize, do the thing. Now I'm like, eh, I'm not tapping in as much outside. I got to figure out how else creatively to, to still social and engage without being outside all the time, right? As an example. So Rebecca mentioned social justice. So one of the values that I, I also have that as a value, social justice and revitalizing communities, especially yes. communities of color. That is something I'm very passionate about. But something I also value, especially in business, is integrity. Mm. And also being able to communicate, right? I, I value communication. And most importantly, I value difficult communication, meaning communication that makes you uncomfortable and makes you feel like, oh, I don't know how this person is going to react or respond. The ability yeah. to communicate in those moments are paramount because sure. in business <laughs> there will always be things coming at you left right you might not agree with the way someone handled a client or a situation and so it's important to be able to communicate in difficult situations what are some more of your values so i've and actually i did i do this with my clients where um i have one-on-one -on -one clients where i help them figure out what their values are and translate that to a personal mission statement or a leadership mission statement um if nonprofits and companies have values that are stated and mission statements why not us as individuals right and so exactly. my values that i've stated are inclusion are um and vulnerability, vulnerability is something that's very powerful for me. I don't see it as a weakness. I see it as a way to build bridges and relationships. And so that whole idea of, um, of, of that concept is really personally powerful for me. The other value that I have that is, it, it's related to my life personally and what attracted me to my husband is this idea of Sankofa. This is an African you know, value that talks about like, really looking to the back to, you know, our ancestors, ancestors before us and learning from them to really pave a path that, you know, for our families and for our communities that will, we don't repeat the same mistakes and we really look to the future. And it's something that I, it's kind of like bringing your community along, you know? Mm -hmm. And it, one thing I observed from my husband when we were dating is he had, he was not only being mentored, 
but he was also mentoring and he was bringing people along. I couldn't be with somebody that's all me, me, me. It's selfish. We're going to rise to the top so we could be driving Bentleys and have a private jet. And que si yo ni que. It's not just about, no, don't get me wrong. I, 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 oh, I was about that. to say, I want to Pero, jet. No, I'm just saying. Both. But <laughs> at the same time, I don't want to leave my community behind. I want to share like what you do in your work, Victoria, where you give people like the shortcuts of, so that way they don't give themselves that cocotazos because they're the first in their families to start businesses. So those are that, that's just an example of how when I was dating, you know, I really that's one of the things that really attracted me to my husband. I was like, this brother's over here. He's the, he's over here bringing people along in the journey of success in his career. And that, that was a turn on for me, girl. That really mm -hmm. was. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And, you know, I'll share this and then maybe we want to move on to the next point. Cause I feel like we could talk about this for days, yes. but one of my recent, not really recent discoveries, but one of the things that I really accepted was one of my values is money. And it's interesting because I'll have these conversations depending on who I'm having the conversation with. Right. More than likely, if I'm having the conversation with someone of color, they'd be like, <laughs> but if I'm having this conversation with someone who has a mass wealth, who has figured out the formula, they get it. They get it. Right. And I want us to kind of break that stigma around money. Money is a tool. Right, yes. money is a resource that you can use to bring back to your communities, to break the generational curses, to build legacy. And if you value money, don't let anybody make you feel like you have less character or that you don't care about people or that you're arrogant or that you're selfish. Like, listen, F all of that. We all have a personal mission and vision for ourselves, to your point, Rebecca. And it's okay if one of those things are, you do not want to struggle, right? No. You do not want to have to live on the struggle bus. You want to have money, an abundance of money, because you know money is an asset that you can use to do whatever you want in this life. And I think finances, especially for Latinas, sometimes can be difficult to for talk sure. about, right? With their That's life right. partner, in business, and that's when things get really fuzzy because if you're not comfortable enough to talk about money and your values around money, your perspectives around money, it will at one point or another inevitably break the connection because it's one of those super core values that either you get it or you don't. Would you agree with that? Uh, you're saying this and I'm just, replaying conversations of my girlfriends that I came up with that honestly, some of my girlfriends that I came up with, truth be told, they're not living the lifestyle that I'm living right now because I have, uh, and it's nothing to be like, oh, I have this great lifestyle. I want them that when I'd be like, hey girl, let's go to New York for the weekend. You want to go hop on a plane? Let's Mama. go, you know, let's live our yes. best life, you know, that sort of thing. And they're like, I can't because, you know, I, 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 I can't afford it, you know? And it's like, Money is a tool, as you said. It's not our God. It's not the thing that we worship. It's the thing that it really, it, it, it moves people's dynamic and in and, 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 and business, you know, on sealing the deal. But also as a people here in this country, given the history of this country, I've observed with my own eyes that people with money to give towards policy decisions that impact our community, that's where things happen. We talk about wanting change. Let's get and serve people into office, elected office. It takes money to do that, a lot of money. And I have been in rooms where there have been decisions made around that table around, okay, who are we going to get elected into office or what policy decision? And I know it's something that's going to affect my people in the end. And I'm just praying to baby Jesus, Lord, <laughs> please let some influential baller come in to be like, oh no, we're not doing that. This is what yeah. we're doing, you know, yeah. because it's important. So money, let's, let's talk about money more people. It's important. Yes. And don't allow anyone to make you feel guilty because you want to collect all the coins and secure the big bag. Okay, yeah. you are deserving and, is, and you are entitled to do that. This is where ancestral wisdom, you know, the tias and the grandmothers that when you're dating somebody and they ain't bringing nothing to the table and they're like, love isn't the only thing that pays bills, honey. But love does not pay the bills, actually. You know, there's a reason why they say that, y'all. That's ancestral wisdom right here. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to the next point. Our third point is that you got to find someone with complementary set of skills, Um because if you and your business partner, you and your life partner, the both 
Like if I had married someone that also had ADHD, I'd be screwed. I, I honestly, I'm <laughs> because I'm all, blah, 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 you know, there's certain areas of my life are, that are dis disorganized. And this is where my husband compliments me because he is so like meticulous about, he's OCD about a lot of things. Um, but also in business, it's important because somebody's going to play an external role. Someone else has to play an internal role, you know, um, and, and, and if both of you are really good with external stakeholders and fundraising, whatever, how are you going to build agreement on what the senior leadership team is going to look like to offset those skills that are needed internally, you know? So those are things that are really, really important. Strategy versus operations. This is where, when I talk to clients, I'm like, yes, having a strategy, big picture vision is very important, but what are the tactics, you know, the operations, the things internally? So you got to partner with someone in business that's going to really complement your skill set well. So be, be mindful of that, y'all. Yes, I love that. I mean, so I'm one of those big vision <laughs> thinkers people. And like, I don't like the details. I don't want to play in the details. Yeah. The details and I, I know they bore me. It like, I feel like cripples my creativity. So I know, again, self-awareness, knowing that about myself, if I'm going to collaborate, go into business with anyone, I would really love for them to love the details and like right. live and breathe the details and like <laughs> love being in that space because that's a complementary skill set and value that they bring to the table, right? Can I, I just can I yeah, just tell ahead. you something that I was doing today that I was like, Ugh, I hate doing this. And <laughs> I'm not partnered with anyone in my business and my consulting practice with nonprofits, but I do have a virtual assistant. So I'm just like, something I had to do today, which I hate is invoicing like mm -hmm. having an invoice the semantics of going and creating a like i hate that stuff and then meanwhile i got my husband saying hey yo when is target gonna pay us for that campaign you just did <laughs> and it's like oh yeah i gotta i gotta so if i had a business partner or something you know i would make sure that those things that as an adhd executive would because but there's things that i do that are like amazing ex as an external voice face and voice you know, marketing, that's my jam. That's where I love to live, um, and, and, but be freed up that way. But I just wanted to give like a real life example of like how no, that plays a Great out. example. Um, and by the way, I see people asking questions in the comments, put it in the question box. Um, so at the end, if we have some time left, we'll try and yeah. get to those questions. We don't want to miss them. Um, again, thank you guys for being here. This is amazing. Okay, so one more thing I want to add to this. Uh, because this is where it gets like really spicy and we talk about complementary skills is you have to know, you know, yourself on the type of decision making you are, your approach, um, and not only your communication style, but very much your personality. Like you want that to be complementary as well, because you don't want to bump heads. And what's been interesting in some of my past collaborations, you know, I'm attracted to people who are like me. I'm attracted to the alphas. I'm attracted to the go-getters. I'm attracted to, you know, people who get shit done. And what I found is it can get really interesting if there's too much of the same happening. There's too much of an opportunity for, you know, this person to want to have the last word, this person to want to make the final decision, this person thinks they're right this person doesn't want to be wrong and it just doesn't allow for the relationship to flourish in the way that it could because you guys are too alike yeah that's right so this whole thing about opposites attract like play into that a little bit and really think about okay is this advantageous is this complimentary or is this something that's going to um negate what we're trying to do here so so really important and it's okay if you like someone as a person but you do not want to go into business with them because there is a certain level of characteristic and attributes that even though they're very cool to go have a cocktail with and you like them as a person that doesn't mean that that's going to translate to actually doing business with the person. Say right? it again for the people <laughs> in the back. Uh, couldn't be more true. Uh, could not be more true. And so we, I also want to talk about this myth or notion, not myth, but notion of power couple, right? So mm -hmm. a lot of people have called me and my husband a power couple. I'll take it. That's fine. I, I love channeling, you know, uh, Beyonce and Jay-Z, you know, like whatever that looks like. But 
let's talk about the reality of what that means. That means two alphas coming together. So I don't want to position this like, oh, it's been 19 years of heaven and bliss. Nana, not, I have had some conflict in my in my marriage. So one mm -hmm. of the things that I would incur, and the reason why we are still standing today is because we continuously invest in our relationship, weekly date nights, especially after the kids came, especially after the kids came. But coupling that with also therapy, like when you have two alpha people in a marriage or in a part, a life partnership, a personal relationship, you, you there's some pluses and deltas that come along with that, those power dynamics. And so mm -hmm. we've, and we're still learning and growing on how to, you know, uh, effectively communicate and resolve conflict but it's like what you said earlier victoria just like you're the kind of person that you love living in that space of trying to figure out how to have the difficult conversations and grow and progress from that and so if just fair warning you want to do big things and be a power couple or whatever that's great but i've also seen couples where there's one of the two of them that's out there really powerful face voice that sort of thing and but there's a quiet one behind the scenes that is making shit happen Ooh, sorry my yeah. my people aren't used to hearing me <laughs> curse i got a curse jar in the house that my kids this is like office. hip hour okay we yes, say what we want right. to say <laughs> but no but but seriously like let's talk about the reality of that dynamic and uh, you know what you're signing up for but if you sign up for being a power couple and uh, uh, you know going forward in that way just know that you also have to invest in having coaches and mentors, even in that relationship via therapy. Absolutely. So, and, you know, Rebecca's happily married, 19 years, a mama <laughs> bear. For those of you who are single, like me, and who are on the dating scene and who are trying to figure out your way, because I would say that, you know, there's a shift happening with the genders right now. And there's a lot of animosity between the two genders. Mm. And it's causing a lot of riff, right? It's got, you know, we've got sound bites of men saying women need to be more submissive. You got the woman saying, you know, men ain't shit. They got to get their act together. They don't know how to handle an independent woman, etc. So take these tips into consideration because when you are dating, and I'm talking about dating with intention, like I am, I'm dating to find my husband, period, duh, okay? With a T at the end. <laughs> With a big T at the end. And <laughs> it took a long time for me to get comfortable to say that out loud on the yeah. dating scene because there was this thing of like, oh, you're going to make them uncomfortable. Like, you can't say that at the beginning. Why not? Like, that's the intention. We're not children no more. Like, this is yeah. what it is. Like, yeah, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have fun and all of that. But like, we here for a long time, not a short time. <laughs> like, that's right. let's make it happen. So keep these things in mind, you know? Rebecca said her and hubby are alpha. Me, on dates with alpha, we clash. We clash because, you know, not because we're not emotionally intelligent enough, but it takes a lot of work and thought um, and a specific communication style in order for the messages to land in the way you want them to land, right? So, right. so understand that. So if you're an alpha, and you're looking for a partner, think about the pros and cons of finding someone who's just like you or finding someone who's complementary to those other skill sets. One thing that came up that I wanted to address here is we got to stop idolizing other people's relationships and then putting that pressure, whether that's a business relationship or a personal relationship, yes. and placing that pressure on our partners, our potential partners, because you got the sauce. You got to figure out the ingredients for your sauce and what's going to make it happen. You can't go and follow somebody else's recipe and think that it's going to work the same for you because you don't know the struggles. You don't know the hard times. You don't know the difficult conversations. And you certainly don't know what happens behind closed doors. So whatever you see on social media and you're idolizing someone and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe he did that for her. My man don't do that for me. Or, oh my God. <laughs> like, I love the New York accent. You guys <laughs> For her, not for me. I love it. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> like, I can't believe they're doing that. And I want that, right? Or, oh my God, that looks so cute. Like, listen, do not idolize other people and put them on such a pedestal. You have to first self-reflect, figure out what's important to you, what makes you happy, and what makes you smile, and not try to be in competition with That's other right. relationships. 
And I think th this really marries itself and lends itself really well to the next two pointers, which is find someone who gives and takes, as well as find someone who wants to grow and will support your growth. I feel like those two pointers are very complementary to this discussion we're just having right now, is that, you know, I don't like this notion that people put on personal relationships and marriages that you got to get, like, it's got to be 50-50. You are never, ever, ever going to be, you know, where problems in life just meticulously happen 50-50. They don't happen that way, you know? Like, there are times where my partner needs more from me and I have to give more. And there are seasons where it's the opposite. And so we just got to be, if, if, you have to know yourself really well and say, like, if, if I'm with a person that's just constantly a taker and is super selfish all the time, you, that's a red flag. It's a red flag while you're dating, right? Um, also, in, in, in business relationships, like give and take, that's really, really important. You want to talk a little bit about that, Victoria? Yeah. So on the business side, you know, the give and take. So I would like to use our uh collaboration as an example mm -hmm. uh because you know rebecca and i i find that you know is very fluid when we're preparing for these conversations and it's almost like we didn't even have to say you're gonna do this i'm gonna do that we, each of us tapped into our strengths and our power and we just went with it right and it worked really well like we didn't even have to have a conversation about what you're gonna do and what i'm gonna do we kind of just like again played up our strengths and just did what we do well right yes. which is what attracted us to each other in the first place right That's so right. if you just do what you do well and not feel like oh i'm doing more than this person is doing and you just do you and operate in your zone of genius mm. a you set the example for the partnership, right? So you're not only talking the talk, you're walking the walk, but B, it allows for the opportunity for the relationship to flow instead of putting so much pressure um, and, and structure on the relationship. Now, with that said, this is why it's important to understand who you're doing business with. Like some instances, you might have to put that structure you might have to have the full blown agenda. You might have to make sure, you know, and follow up with people. But again, understanding the person's value system, their strengths and how they work is helpful in knowing like what your approach is going to be, but also giving the opportunity to figure things out as you go. So I think a good rule of thumb is when you're thinking about going into something really serious, like there's a lot of money on the table or you're about to sign some contracts like, you know, be married to the person to the hip, like put them through, do some smaller things that require yeah. legwork to kind of yeah. test it out. That's right. Because once you're able to see like, oh, okay, this is interesting. This worked really well. Let's talk about doing something bigger. Let's talk about doing something a little more formalized, more structured, more serious. Maybe we are going to sign some NDAs and create some magic together. But if you're able to kind of test it out first with something small, that's a real good indication of what is to come in the future. And pay attention to the red flags. <laughs> pay attention. Right. Like, I've always said, said to women, whatever bothers you about the person that you're dating right now, multiply it by a million. Once you guys live together or you mm. partner together, you get married. Multiply it by a million because it's going to really irk you. And the thing that just bothered you when you were dating, it's going to like make you miserable so there's some things that are deal breakers in that regard and others that it's just like it's not a big deal you just you know plow through it um but no i i couldn't agree with you more and, and this whole thing around supporting one another um which wait hold on a second before this is my adhd brain going because you mentioned a point um earlier that that i wanted to get to and i just escaped me ah! um i hate when that happens but <laughs> Yeah, la madre. I oh, have that so happens. much structure, being able to go with the flow. Oh, an example of all the, one of the things that I advise like my clients on, which it has relationship implications too, is sometimes you want to hire someone as a consultant before you have a W-2 engagement. Because mm -hmm. similarly, it's like, once you're stuck with an employee that's a W-2, not, I hate saying stuck with, but consulting gives you, or pro, or per project gives you kind of a preview of what kind of deliverables, the quality of their work. So similarly, yes, try to have those kinds of little engagements that gives you a little window into who that 
potential business partner, how they might operate. So, but yeah. in terms of supporting and growing with one another, like this is something that I just tip my hat off to my husband on because when we were, even though he's been in the for-profit private equity uh, sector, you know, and real estate, and I've been in the nonprofit sector, we've always tried to find ways in our executive level positions that as we're meeting people and they might, have deep pockets, um, they might have a foundation that gives to, to, to nonprofits, or maybe they're a nonprofit that I know they're doing social business enterprise with MBAs. My husband has an MBA. You know, we've always, some of my husband's investors have become my donors in nonprofit and vice versa. And so just that is something that's important when we talk about like how does supporting and growing together look in that way. But it's also in the interpersonal, like, I, I cannot tell you how many times because I just needed a break from life, you know, like life expectations in the home front that my husband's like, I got this as I know your father's in hospice right now. Like, you know, I know you're going through it. And so um, I, I've just been really lucky to have a partner in life that he supported me, not just in my business endeavors as a nonprofit executive, but also in life, you know, because they all, they, they all are intertwined. Absolutely. And I think, that support piece is really, really important that we tend to <clears throat> overlook because we think like, I got this, like, I'm Gucci. Like, I don't need all that support. Like, I'm gonna do me, you do you, we'll operate in our lanes and then we'll come together at the end of the evening and do what we gotta do. But what I found is, first of all, life be life in, okay? So there's gonna be a lot of things that happen that are not part of your plan. And you're going to need all the support that you have. And it doesn't matter how strong you have you are. It doesn't matter how much of a goal, you know, trendsetter you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. There is nothing like having someone that you can trust that you know has your back, no That's matter right. what. Like uh -huh. that right there is golden. And I would say, and Rebecca, perhaps you'll agree with this, is worth the therapy, is worth the difficult conversations, is worth, you know, looking side eye, like, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it's worth it because that to me is the ultimate, I would say, um, that is like the, what is something, what is that called? That is the holy grail. That is the holy grail is being able to find someone that actually truly supports you and got you no matter what. Through That's mistakes, right. through you making a fool out of yourself, you making them upset. And that is for business and personal life. Like you need a business partner who is going to support you no matter what. So if you're in a client meeting, they need to support you, right? In that client meeting, you guys need to be aligned on the same page. And it's not like, oh, let me go behind mm -hmm. the scenes and go chat with this client try to get this back end deal, right? And leave you to hang, right? And jump right. off the edge by yourself, right? That's right. And you talked about this earlier, which goes on to the next tip that around just really embrace, finding someone that embraces like you do proactive conflict management. Since you love that so much, girl, why don't you talk a little bit about what that looks like <laughs> in reality for business partnership? So that can, get, that can get real tricky. It can get real tricky and what I've had to learn is not everybody's like me, meaning not everybody's going to handle a difficult situation like me. So I'm the type of person that will pick up the phone and be like, okay, what, what's going on? Like, let's talk about this, what's happening, etc. And then you have other people, their way of handling a difficult conversation is having conversations with other people, but you. <laughs> and, you know, that can make things really tricky when you are not in a space where you respect one another enough to confront this situation with each other before right. engaging anybody else. So when we're talking about conflict management, like that's my number one tip is to make sure that you are managing the conflict with the other person that's in the conflict, not with other people that are outside of the conflict, right? Leave la suegra out leave your BFF out, like, especially in the person, interpersonal relationship with, with the, your life partner. Um, that's really, really, that just exasperates the situation when you're taking your issues and problems outside of the marriage or that partnership. So you're absolutely Not right. Not only that, but it, it, it starts to 
it erodes it erodes the respect yes it erodes the respect and it also gets other people to start looking at them differently like it's just not worth it you know and and that's what i found but not everybody manages conflict the same way and that's why it's really important to understand who you're going to collaborate and do business with because conflict will arise it's inevitable you know you're human beings you're going to disagree right you're going to do things that each other doesn't like right they're not going to be your favorite person all the time right because we're human <laughs> and we just do things um but you have to be able to have the difficult conversations even if you have you know that gut feeling where it's like oh god i gotta go have this feeling or what am i gonna you know, say you know what the, here's the thing is that we're all products of our environments and our upbringing and this is why therapy in interpersonal relationships is it's it's important because like it or not we bring like those norms of engagement in conflict what we mm -hmm. observed growing up if mommy and papi would yell at each other aggressively where you thought yes. that somebody was gonna you know square up versus you know the silent treatment you know being passive aggressive that sort of thing we're all products of that and we bring that into not just our interpersonal relationships with your life partner but also in business and mm -hmm. so um i can't tell you and but then there's also this consideration of as a latina if you are looking for a business partner um there's certain aspects about being Latina that could be misinterpreted in corporate nonprofits, like wherever, just dealing with people that um, you just have to, again, know yourself and know the kind of conflict management style of a person that you would need. Is it a person that like, they think you're the angry Latina all the time, just because you're passionate and making your points? It's probably not going to lend itself very well to a business partnership, you know, mm -hmm. or a life partnership and mm -hmm. so just that's why therapy is important guys because we bring all that to the table and it's important to like work that stuff out and give up the stuff the norms that are just not good or positive in building yeah. relationships totally and for the record i am not a conflict management specialist <laughs> i can still try some some shit blows me away i'm like wow this is crazy so i am not a specialist um i just have experiences that I've learned from and, and you know taking notes like okay I'm gonna bring this into the next situation I'm gonna handle it this way so that this doesn't happen but one of the major learnings I have is knowing when to walk away oh my when god it's not working and there's no resolution you know it's just like here you have to be strong and brave and courageous enough to say you know what this is not working I wish you the best Pero I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go. Yep. Yep. No, not no, that's that's absolutely right. Um, I love this next point. Find someone who can share your vision for the future. Mm. So um I wanna just share something around in the business world. It's interesting what when 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 business partnerships is um where what's the end game? Do you wanna sell the company? Do you want to keep it as a legacy for your kids? Those are really important conversations that you have to have on the front end with yeah. a business partnership. Similarly, in your life with the person that you end up marrying or living with or partnered with in life is what, once the kids are gone, if you guys choose to have kids and that sort of thing, what kind of life do you want to have with your partner? How do we prepare for that? Is there agreement, money again, is there agreement in how we're going to move forward in our finances as a couple to prepare for that vision for our future? Mm -hmm. I already told my husband, once Solomon goes off to college, deuces, I'm out to Miami. <laughs> you come, come with me, babe. This last weekend trip, I think it helps cement that for him. He was like, yes, yes, we're moving away from Chicago on Solomon. But this is something that we've talked about. We've talked to our financial planner about it. Like, what physically do we want in our life? uh in 10 years 20 years 30 years once the kids are gone you know uh meaning they're out of you know from out of the nest so um that that's something really important alignment on what success for the future whether it's in your business or in your relationship with your life partner what does that look like i think alignment for the future and alignment on you know what this relationship will entail you know yeah. so certain paperwork mm -hmm. needs to definitely be in place, right? I think on the personal side, 
and the business side right definitely on the business side you guys need to be very clear on what are the parameters of the relationship what this partnership entails what are we doing what is the exit plan if we're choosing to exit what are we going to be responsible for like all of those things need to be written down and signed off on so that everybody is on the same page and everybody understands what the other is doing and not doing. And also, when you get people to sign something, that's when you really see, like, if they really about this life, right? Like, if, so I'm hosting an event in, uh, in November in New York, and I sent my speakers an agreement. And they saw the agreement and they're like, wait, I got to sign this? Yeah, you got to sign this. Like, hello, I want us to all be in agreement that everyone understands what they're responsible for, what's happening, what's not happening. So there's no gray area. You don't want any gray area when it comes to business partnerships. I don't care how you feel. I don't care emotionally if you feel yucky about it. You do not want any gray area because it will come and bite you in the ass and <laughs> you do not eliminate the gray area it needs to be black and white and that's it that's right and in that writing process it's interesting because you're calling out the things that you're actually valuing in the business partnership um i remember my husband had a business partner before in one of the companies that he sold where his thing was like internal the brother can create an excel spreadsheet like nobody's business and calculate cash flow project all that stuff and whereas my husband was a different set, you know, like a different, but once it's in writing and you've cemented that, it's important to actually respect one, one another in what you've outlined is, are your roles, you know, um, and what you're bringing to the table. Things go awry really quickly when it's like, well, I'm the one in the office that's managing the staff and the internal stuff while you're out there doing God knows what, you know, um, but the God knows what is probably the, the money investor attractor of the dollars to invest in the business that maybe right. that internal person is managing and hiring people and training people and all that good stuff. So it's important that once you have that stuff in writing, that you move forward with a sense of respect and valuing what that other partner is bringing to the table. Um, because when people get real cocky, like, well, me raising money is more important than operationalizing the business that's a recipe for disaster. So right. value and respect the roles that you guys are playing once you Absolutely. put all that in writing. Yes, yes, I love that. Um, and I know we're, we're almost coming up on time and we have a couple of questions that I saw in the question box. So if you guys have questions, put them in the question box and we'll take a couple of minutes um, to answer those. But we've covered all the points, I believe, right? We've gone through- Yeah, we have, points. we totally have. And- um, yeah, it's, it's it, like you said, when we were preparing for this, it's amazing how these two things are similar, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the approaches to uh, finding the best partner in life and in business. Absolutely. So let's do a quick recap. So we shared eight points. So we're going to go through those real quickly. So first is knowing yourself. That's before, above, and beyond anything, foundation, self-awareness. Got to do that. Um, finding someone who you genuinely like and trust, right? Uh, finding someone who shares your values and taking the time to understand what your values are. Um, finding someone who has a complementary set of skills, right? Uh, find someone who gives and takes, right? It should be a give and receive relationship. Find someone who wants to grow and support your growth. Find someone who will engage in proactive conflict management. Uh, find someone who shares your vision for the future and find someone who is prepared for the end. Meaning, are you exiting out of the business? What's happening after kids? Um, you know, what are the long-term goals for this union, for this partnership? So those are the eight tips. For those of you who want to watch the replay and get all the replays from La Jefa Hour, it is over on the YouTube streets um, on my channel, Victoria Gen TV. When this replay is available, Rebecca and I will post in our stories. So pay attention to our stories. Uh, but if you want to catch the replay from weeks past, you can just go to the channel. The link is in my bio. So you can check that out. Um, and we have two more, two more La Jefa hours going down, which I'll share with you. So next week, we'll be doing this on October 5th. 
from 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern, 12 to 1 Central. And the topic for next week is daring to leap. Daring to leap, how to bet on yourself. Let me see what else this says. How to bet on yourself successfully. Ooh, I like that one. How to bet on yourself successfully. So that is next week. And then the one after next week and our final one is on October 13th. And we'll share what that is going to be about um, as we get closer to the date. Um, you have some call to actions, Rebecca, you want to share with the people. Sure. Um, we all know that Hurricane for Fiona really uh, did a number on Puerto Rico. And so wanted to just remind folks that at the top of my Linktree link in my bio, there is a link to support the museum, uh, the National Museum of Puerto Rican Arts and Culture, who secured a match, a challenge match opportunity with the Titin Foundation and dollar for dollar. So if you get 20 bucks, it's like giving, it's like you gave 40 bucks. Okay. So really important um, that we all give to those relief efforts. I'm actually flying out on Saturday to go on the ground and help volunteer um, with the relief efforts. And so just Puerto Rico is top of mind. If you're a fellow Boricua, you know how much our heart is, 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 is really out there for, for our people on the island. So um, just wanted to remind people that there are ways to support and give. I love that. Everybody throw a plain emoji in the comments to wish safe travels to Rebecca and to have a successful um, you know, mission on the island. Shout out to all of our Boricuas, our Dominican Republic brothers yes. and sisters, and shout out to everybody in Florida. I mean, these Mother Nature be happy. Her she way. is undefeated. <laughs> Don't mess with her. That is a hippo above a hippo. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, yeah. One more gift we wanted to share before we go to the questions, guys, is if you are interested in starting a business, you want to leave your nine to five, you want to make the transition from corporate into entrepreneurship, but you're not sure where to start, you don't know what type of business to even begin with, um, and you definitely don't want to lose your financial security, super important. There is a free training uh, that I have that's showing you the three steps you can take today to start making that transition. And so if you go to the link in my bio here on Instagram, you'll see there's a section that says free training, tap on that, and you'll have immediate access to that training. So you can start bringing your entrepreneurial journey to life. And I would love to partner with you on that effort. Shout out to everybody putting the planes in the comments. You see that? Thank you. You guys are the best. I love it. <laughs> I love it. All right. So we have let's take one question. Yeah, because we got two. Minutes yeah. left. Are you okay with that? Yeah, for sure. So let's see. Um, so you can see the questions on your end, right? Because I'm Yes, I can see the questions on my end. Shout out to Theater Bear. I hope she's still in the building because she submitted, she submitted a couple of questions. So I'm going to pick one. Um, let's see. What if you want to talk to others first because you need perspective on a conflict? So that's with the conflict management uh, theme that we were going with earlier. So, so what if you feel like you need to talk to other people to get a perspective on the I would, conflict? I would say on a personal relationship, the way that I, the framework mentally that I would use to select whether or not I do talk to someone is that what if, once they find out what the conflict is and after you've resolved it with your partner, are you okay with them having that imagery of whatever it is that um, is causing the conflict? Do you still want them to have that about your partner? Because that's the thing. Once the cat's out of the bag. And of course, when I say that, it sounds like it's super serious, like cheating or whatever. But you know what? People in your family and who love you and your girls, they will get amped up even for like the little things, you know, because they're probably loyal to you. So just... In your mind, think to yourself, after I've told them what, what, I, what, what the issue is, are they still going to look at my spouse or my partner? Is it going to be disparaging you know, to them? Um, that's why it's good to have a therapist. I keep on going back because that's an independent person. You know that even if you see them in the grocery store, they're not allowed to talk to you because you're supposed, like the norms of engagement, because that space that you have in therapy it's your sacred space. And so it becomes very awkward. Like if you see your therapist out in public, because they're technically not supposed to engage. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know that until I was, I was educated on that. So just find, the bottom line is, if you feel the need that you really need to have a third person opinion, 
get someone who's unbiased, you know, and our friends, our familia, they're not going to be unbiased. They're, they're, they're team Victoria, they're team whoever, you know, whatever your name is. Yes. And I would say on the business front, it would be the same advice, you know, go get advice or consult from someone who is unbiased, meaning that if you are like in a relationship with more than one partner, like let's say there's a group of people that are a part of a particular project and there's a conflict that arises, I would highly, highly recommend not starting the bochinche train and talking to everybody and anybody in the partnership except the person that you have the direct conflict with. Like give people the respect and the dignity to just pick up the phone and be like, hey, I don't feel good about this. This is something that, you know, rubbed me the wrong way. Can we talk about it? Like that builds another level and layer of trust and helps you foster a relationship when you're able to have respectful conversations with one another. So think of it that way. Think of it as an opportunity to just strengthen the relationship by just being real and being like, hey, I don't like this. I don't like what you just did here. Like, can we talk about it? <laughs> What's That's up? Right. right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Heavy. It doesn't need to be super complex. The second thing that I would advise is if you need to take a breather, take your breather. All right. Don't respond to an email when you're super emotional yes. and being crazy. Like, take the time to reflect on how you want to say things so that nothing is miscommunicated and you guys are able to actually have like a productive conversation versus it being catty and you guys coming for each other's throats because at the end of the day you care about this person and you can want i just tell you Victor, that is like so spot on you need to cool off before you square up okay <laughs> like do yes not square up cool up before you kids. square up <laughs> don't do it like i don't espouse to that ideology of don't let the sun set on your anger with your spouse, you know, and just make up before you go to bed. No, sometimes you have to go to bed, sleep on it, wake up the next morning, and you find yourself being more calm and mm -hmm. more logical in your arguments and less mm -hmm. emotional. Mm -hmm. um, and so really, really important to like give it a breather. I can tell you in business how many times I've been pissed about something and I go and I got that keyboard courage and I'm like, da, 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 da. And then I said, let me just say that it's a draft. And the next morning, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I did not send that, that, that email because it was like scorched earth, you know? Yes. And so get, we, and this is, you know, this is something that we have to unlearn because many of us in our upbringing, growing up in the hood, especially because in the hood, when you grow up in the hood, you got to square up immediately to show your sign. Like I am to be yes. respected. You can't do that in business. And you certainly can't do that in really important interpersonal relationships. Because you still got to sleep next to that person every night. <laughs> no, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That is a great way for us to end. Rebecca, yeah. thank you so much um, yeah. for all of your insights today. This thank has been you, a girl. I'd be learning with you. I'd be like this. I'd be like this. Me too. I'd be like taking my notes, okay? Um, <laughs> and I love that for us. And I love yes. that for our community. Thank you guys for showing up every week for La Jefa Hour. You know, give us your feedback. Let us know what you are thinking. Um, when you watch the YouTube replays, leave your comments. Like, let us know um, your thoughts on this uh, yeah. because we would love to hear from you guys. Um, let's see. Last minute thoughts, I would say, or closing thoughts. Um, I would say at the end of the day, most of the issues, complexities, Things that are throwing you off can truly be solved by having some cafecito and some pan and like just <laughs> having a good conversation. That's it. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and my closing thought is just ladies in particular, do not suppress that voice within. When you are dating someone, if there is a red flag, then you're feeling it, but your desire to be in partnership with someone in your life and share your life with is just dominating and trying to suppress that feeling. Do not sh shush your inner voice and your instincts. Mm. You could also call into the Christian community being led by the Holy Spirit. I totally believe that 
God has given us an internal instinct to be led in life. Do not suppress that voice just because you want to be hooked up with your boo thing for life. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that, please. I lady. love that. And same thing for <laughs> the, the compass. compass. Trust your it's intuition. Your yeah. intuition got you. That is the, a competitive advantage I feel that women have. Oh, <laughs> Use yes. your intuition. Pay attention to her. Don't, don't be trying to shun her. She knows. She knows. What's yeah, that's right. All right. All right. Well, this has been fun. I can't wait for next week, girl. Same here. Uh, safe travels to Puerto Rico. Thank Shout you, out Mama. to everybody who's watching. Have an amazing rest of your week. And we'll see you next week for La Jeta Hour. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Bye.